Welcome back to the Touchline here on Y254. I'm Robert Osoro and it is time for the fan favorite fan zone where we talk about football all around the world. But today we'll be kicking off with the game that will be starting at 3 p.m. which will be live on KBC Channel 1. That is Arambe Stars versus South Sudan. Joining me for this segment is the one and only Tyra Swayaki. Big man, how are you doing? I'm very well. Thank yeah. you for having me. Nice mm. to see you. Yeah. And... Um, a new friend for me here as well. <laughs> nice to meet you too. <laughs> hey, you don't know Eric? No, we've not met before. <laughs> not met. Yeah. Um, a lot of the time, uh, viewers think that yeah. we all know one another. Do yes. We meet here. <laughs> it's uh, where we touch base on the touchline. Yeah. Eric Aganya is the one that we are talking about. But before we talk about everything that is happening in Europe, we've got to talk about Arambe Stars playing South Sudan, Eric, this afternoon. What do you make of Kimanzi's game today? Uh, I think... Uh, uh, we're expecting uh, more of attack uh, and uh, we want to see now Ghost Mule stamping his authority on the team Yes. after, after taking over from uh, Kimanzi. You remember the last uh, lineups he's come up with was more or less Kimanzi's team. Yes. Now he's had some time with, uh, with them. Now we want to see what can he do as as as, as Ghost Mule. Yes. Uh, we want to see his philosophy on uh, on the field. Yeah. Uh, being affected by the players he's going to field today, mm. uh, but all in all, being patriotic, we're expecting a win for our investors. Yeah. As it stands at the moment, Kenya might not make it to the Africa Cup of Nations because we have got two matches remaining and those are six points. Mathematically, we need all the six points for us to get to nine so that we can have a chance of playing in the next edition of the Africa Cup of Nations. And then this month alone, we'll be playing five matches, three friendlies and then two Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. That's against Egypt and Togo. Mike... Otiono, the former Gormaya player who was here, he said, we can get four points. Do you think we can get that against Egypt and Togo? Well, uh, not even on paper yeah. does it look easy. Mm -hmm. Now, in the practical sense, we would need more than prayers. We would need a miracle. Yes. I know that people historically, uh, one or two of them have been known to come back from the dead. Mm -hmm. That would be pretty much what Harambe stars need. Because right now we are dead as a doornail. Yes. Why? Not because we cannot get the points, it's not impossible, but pretty much it's not in our hands. Why? Because obviously the two teams on top of the log um, stand a higher chance given that um, they've left us by quite a considerable gap. Yes. And we would have also not just to fully depend on our result, but to depend on their results as well, hoping that they lose. Yes. That would give us a chance. So when it's not in your hands, really you need a miracle. And yeah. that's the kind of situation we find ourselves in. And I don't see them wanting to lose. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll, they'll pretty much also try and secure the bag for themselves. It's not going to be easy against Egypt here. Mm -hmm. And it's not going to be easy against Togo away. Yeah. So... It's, it's pretty much not in our hands. As for today against South Sudan, it's a friendly, but um, definitely not the usual kind of friendly. It's a, a friendly that's pegged on the African Cup of Nations qualifiers that are coming in a few days' time. Yeah. If there are mistakes to be made, today is the day to make them. And then they can be worked on. It's, for me, it's really not much about the result. Yes, the psychological element is important for that, but it's about how we work on any mistakes that need to be made, our weak areas need to be looked into so that when we go in against Egypt in the next few days yeah. and Togo also in the next few days, we can go in at full strength. Wow. A big one there from Taylor Swayaki talking about Arambe Stars going full strength when they go for the Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers. It is the touchline here on Y254. At Y254 channel is where you can find us on the social media platform. Join the live stream and you can enjoy the best of what Y254 can offer. Now let's go ahead and talk about everything that happened during the midweek where we had the UEFA Champions League and the UEFA Europa League. Who are the winners and losers of these editions of the UEFA Champions League? Eric, for you, which one will you go for when it comes to the winners? And Let's start with the winners of the UEFA Champions League. Uh, the UEFA Champions League, the winners, of course, uh, we had PSG yeah. uh, coming, uh, getting that draw. Uh, is more than they needed uh, because remember they had uh, 
uh, defeated Barcelona already. Yes. Uh, that was not a surprise because uh, Barcelona have more problems mm -hmm. than uh, on-field problems. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, they have problems with their structure. They have problems with their team. They have an aging squad. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was expected. Uh, Dortmund also sailed through. Yes. Uh, but for me, the biggest winner for me will be Liverpool. Yeah. Uh, because remember, Liverpool has not been doing well uh, in their domestic league and the Premier League. And um, they've been shaky. Mm -hmm. And I remember before that game, they had just been defeated by Fulham. Yeah. So <laughs> uh, for them to come now and uh, a win against Leipzig uh, was a big, big, big morale booster to them. Yes. And I think they're putting all their, their eggs now in the Champions League. In the Champions League. Yes. We, we can see how they'll be performing when it comes to Europe. But the one you started with, Barcelona and uh, Paris Saint-Germain, it, it looks like now Paris Saint-Germain and Kylian Mbappe has got to be the new kid on the block going forward. Paris Saint-Germain are not entirely the new kid on the block in European football. Um, for many years, they and their fellow compatriots, Olympic Lyonnais, yeah. better known as Lyon, have been having this flirtatious relationship with glory in the UEFA Champions League. Yes. I think for the last 20 or so years, perhaps even more. But this time around, they have a new kid on the block, Kylian yes. Mbappe. Mm -hmm. And not just him, they've got Neymar, they've got a squad that mm -hmm. last season we saw go all the way into the UEFA Champions League final, losing narrowly a goal to nothing to Bayern Munich, yes. who went on to win the FIFA World Club Cup. And it, it's a huge achievement yeah. for uh, Paris Saint-Germain to get to that final itself. And not just that, to maintain relevance in the UEFA Champions League. Remember there were big names in the UEFA Champions League before, AC Milan, Manchester United, they're now contesting in the UEFA Europa League. Yes. So to remain relevant through those years, and not just that, to go a notch or two higher mm -hmm. and to contest for the ultimate prize is a huge thing. And now that they have a strong contingent, they look like they know the circuit well of the UEFA Champions League, even though they're playing before empty stadiums, I think they are to be taken very, very seriously. Yeah. They are very, very strong very capable but um to kill their previous coach left them went to chelsea it, it's still a gray area to see how they'll perform yeah and uh the the new manager uh, i forget his name he Pochettino. coached Tottenham. Pochettino. Mauricio, Mauricio, Mauricio Pochettino. Pochettino. thank you yeah. uh but given that pochettino has an idea or two about the uefa champions league yeah. and he's fitted in well at psg then you can have some confidence in them. Well, then we have FC Porto Eric defeating uh, Juventus yeah. and they knocked Cristiano Ronaldo out of the Champions League, I think for the first time in 14 years, I, I don't know, in 10 years, and now Cristiano Ronaldo is not going to be there. This was a big result also for FC Porto to get onto the quarterfinals, which they have not done for a very long time. Yeah, yeah, we, we can see the big names uh, are coming back, as uh, Tyrus has said, uh, because uh, we cannot say that uh, FC Porto has not dominated. Remember, uh, they won it with, with Mourinho. Yes. And uh, for a very long time, they have not uh, come up to that uh, stage. Uh, but for them, uh, the game against Juventus was a big, big game, and uh, it showed character. Because you realize that it's a game that went even into extra time. Yes. And uh, uh, they scored <laughs> their goal late, late, late. Yes. It shows a lot of character uh, in the kind of players that they have right now. And uh, you can see that the kind of players they have a blend between uh, experienced players mm -hmm. like Pepe and uh, a blend between the experienced players and the young players coming in. Yes. So the young players are learning a lot from these experienced players. Uh, because uh, uh, when you have people who have seen it, Pepe has played for Real Madrid, he has seen it all. Yes. Uh, he will calm down nerves when they could have uh, lost. You remember, if you compare the game against uh, uh, AC Milan and Manchester United, they considered a stupid goal towards the end. You see, if you have an experienced defender, you're not going to make that mistake. Yes. Uh, because he knows his positioning properly. And that is what has happened to FC Porto yeah. and uh, it should uh, they shouldn't be taken lightly. Mm -hmm. Overall <laughs> I think we've also witnessed a change of guard this week with the exit of Cristiano Ronaldo mm -hmm. and Lionel Messi mm -hmm. from the UEFA Champions League that should not go unnoticed. It Co was coming up uh, talking about change of guard has got to be this kid from Borussia Dortmund, Erling Haaland. 
Yes, mm -hmm. definitely. Yeah. And Kylian Mbappe, mm -hmm. I think that will be the new rivalry because the media needs something to feed the public with and yeah. the public needs something to debate on. Mm -hmm. It makes it keeps football alive beyond the 90 minutes. Yes. What, what do you make of uh, Ireland? <laughs> uh, he's it. a good finisher. Yeah. He's a good finisher mm -hmm. and uh, he's been able to prove uh, himself he has one powerful left leg. Yes. And uh, uh, what gives him an edge now, uh, I saw some of the games he played recently, he's very strong in the air also. Mm -hmm. uh, very strong in the air, good jumping power. Mm -hmm. uh, if he can, uh, he's, at, he's 20 years old, eh? yeah. if he can uh, put his head down, he will achieve a lot. Mm -hmm. But the problem with such kind of young kids is that uh, sometimes it gets into their head. Yeah. And uh, they, they, they may not be able to have the discipline uh, uh, that we've seen uh, with the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo yeah. uh, to, to, to go all the way up to 35, 36, yeah. uh, Kina Ibrahimovic, uh, to go all the way to that age and you're still doing it. I yes. like but, uh, his fearless. Yes, he, he's broken a lot of records at the age mm -hmm. of 20. Yeah. And uh, he's a good prospect. And every elite team in, uh, in Europe right now, uh, his name is being mentioned. That uh, the uh, Real Madrid with Man City, <laughs> with Manchester United, Chelsea are on, on his track. So you see, uh, he's going to go far. Just uh, like Mbappe is also yes, being mentioned yes, along yes, those yes, circles. Yes, yes. So it tells you this is the new rivalry yes, uh, at that level. Yeah. And I like it. And I like Haaland's positive attitude. He's very fearless. Uh -huh. But as he said, he's still young. Let's not get carried away. Yeah. Well, Eric Haaland, uh, one of the major records he broke was getting onto the 20 goal mark yeah. very fast with only 14 matches, uh, defeating the likes of Cristiano Ronaldo and Lionel Messi. Some of the other matches that will be played this coming week when it comes to the second leg of the last eight of the Champions League will be having a Manchester City playing home to Borussia Mönchengladbach and Manchester City is leading that fixture by two goals to nil. Then Bayern will be playing away home actually to Lazio. They are leading that fixture by four goals to one. And then Chelsea will be travelling to Atletico Madrid to play Atletico Madrid, but they are leading that fixture by one goal to nil also. And then the last one that is remaining on this fixtures will be Real Madrid playing away to Atalanta. They are also leading Atalanta by one goal to nil. That is it for the UEFA Champions League. Let's also look at the UEFA Europa League where one key fixture that everybody was waiting for, a very mouth-watering clash that was between Manchester United and AC Milan. What did you make of it, Eric? Uh, <laughs> I was disappointed uh, uh, because I, I, as, uh, I felt that uh, uh, Manchester United were sloppy. Uh, they were slow in possession uh, <coughs> because, uh, you see, uh, Manchester United derives uh, a lot of pleasure in transition between uh, uh, from defending to attack. They do it very fast. And uh, uh, you saw what they did to Man City over the weekend, uh, their yes. second goal. Uh, from the keeper to Luke Shaw, goal. Yeah. They were slow against AC Milan. They got lucky even uh, AC Milan lost some chances. Yes. And uh, their finishing was also awful. Uh, they just failed to put the, 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 the tie to rest because Maguire missed a very open chance. That yes. kid James missed another open chance. Mm -hmm. You see, we could, uh, uh, we could be talking about 3-0. Yes. And when you're 3-0 up, uh, uh, you have your head in the in the next round, but yeah. right now uh, they allowed AC Milan to pick a vital away goal. Yes, and uh, AC Milan can decide to go back and sit uh, and sit mm -hmm. on a nil nil draw. Yeah. And let's not forget that uh, 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 Zlatan was not in this match. Yeah, uh, maybe the next game he, he, he will be, be fit. He might be there. Mm -hmm. uh, and you see, uh, 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 Manchester United also have a problem, and they have to fix that. A problem in defending set pieces. Yes. They are conceding so many goals uh, from set pieces. Uh, uh, what about conceding goals at the key times of the game? I think they, that they consider in that concentration. Goal Laps in concentration yeah. comes with an experienced defender. Mm -hmm. Because if you look at that, uh, that corner, yeah. one, you shouldn't have considered the corner. Mm. But now that you've considered the corner in the last minute, defend. Uh, a defend. 
-hmm. man mark yes. because uh, mm -hmm. the guy uh, was left alone mm -hmm. yes. and you see that comes with uh, having an experienced center back yes Mogwai is not as as experienced what if you had pepe in that in that defense mm -hmm. what if you had ramos in that defense could you have considered that goal no yes <laughs> wow yeah. That, like, meaning that the defense for Manchester United is still key for them. Central defense, they yeah. need a central defender, mm -hmm. uh, an experienced central defender, yes. a very fast central defender, uh, because Maguire has a problem with his pace also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, with, the, yeah. with the kind of squad Manchester United have, if you look at them from number one to 11, they shouldn't really be conceding such goals. Such they goals. shouldn't be giving away points mm -hmm. week in, week out. Remember they were contesting for the Premier League this season yeah. a mm -hmm. few weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And now it's up to City. If City keep their momentum going forward, yeah. United have no chance. Yeah. If they lose, then they'll, they'll throw in a lifeline to United and Leicester. Yeah. But you look at the kind of players they have, they should be able to beat Crystal Palace. Yeah. They couldn't beat Crystal Palace when they met a few weeks ago. It's one of those puzzles. And against AC Milan, it was a lapse in concentration. Mm -hmm. Just that. In the most crucial of minutes, yeah. the last dying minutes in a game of football are the most crucial. Of course, all the minutes are crucial, but yeah. the last dying minutes, those ones are so important. Yeah. Because when you consider goal at that point, really psychologically, you're just de depleted. You have no motivation mm -hmm. to come back. You're, yeah. you're just purely dead. Yeah. It's that simple. And then, and then the coach has to take some, some, some responsibility here because you look at uh, your one nil up, uh, yes. uh, you don't resolve to defending mm -hmm. because you, you saw what Olegana did. He pulled out Bruno Fernandes, who was a threat to AC Milan, yes. and uh, brought in Fred, who is more defensive. Yes. So you suck pressure. That's another thing about you suck pressure. Uh, a lot of question marks. Around yes. He, 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 a lot of the, question the, marks around uh, him. Uh, around him. Uh, talk about the new kid uh, now who was given Diallo. his debut, Diallo, coming Diallo. on to the game and scoring uh, on his first uh, game for United. That's the Atalanta spirit. Yeah. He's brought it to Manchester United. But he's also got to meet a team that has that kind of Atalanta spirit. Mm. Atalanta, if you followed them for the last two seasons, especially last season, they are very strong technically. Mm -hmm. And then this season, they have given it a go. They've done their best. Uh, prior to last night's game, they were seated on, in the sixth position. You can see that they have ambitions for Europe. Yeah. And to, to have Diallo there, of course, he was born in Ivory Coast, left for Italy as a child, joined the Atalanta youth system, I think, when he was around 15 years of age. He's coming to Manchester United and he's showing them to play how they should be playing. Yet he's such a young lad, they should be showing him how to play. But instead, he's the one who's got life in him. He's got oomph, he's got spirit, he's got his mojo al alive let, let, let's, and uh, kicking. Let, let's finish up That's with... The uh, rest of the United players should borrow a leaf from yeah. him, yet it should be the other way around. But it was not only Manchester United that had a bad day in the Europa League. Some of the teams that played some of their best football and they came up with win. We saw a win for Tottenham against Dynamo Zagreb away. And also we saw Granada beating Molde by two goals to one. Arsenal also winning three goals to one against Olympiacos. And then AC Roma defeating Shakhtar Donetsk by three goals to nil. Villarreal also winning against Dynamo Kiev by two goals to nil. And then Ajax. Young boys also winning against, uh, yes, Ajax winning 3 0 against young boys there. So, also in the Europa League, is coming out to be a very good final hurdle for some of these major teams. Uh, we, we are having uh, 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 good teams, and uh, uh, the next round, the quarter final, will be very interesting. Yes. Uh, because uh, uh, the most shocking result was uh, AC Roma beating Shakhtar. <laughs> Three goals to nil for me. Uh, I didn't. I didn't see that coming, because I also know Shakhtar to be a very good team. Uh, I also liked what Arsenal did. Uh, they've had a problem uh, having that character to finish yes. off games, and after they scored the first goal, uh, Olympiacos equalised. But they had the character in them to go on and score two late goals. Yes, uh, uh, that to them uh, was a big plus. And uh, as we were saying earlier. Arsenal have realized that this is the only way yeah. they can get to Champions, Champions League, League. Ne next yes. season. Uh, because uh, 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 getting to the top four is a miracle for them. Yeah. Uh, leave alone the top four, maybe the top six, uh, will be a big, big challenge for them. Uh, bearing in mind the matches that they still have. Yeah. Uh, and um, 
So we are looking at very good teams coming into the quarterfinal. Because uh, you're looking at either Manchester United or AC Milan in the quarterfinal, mm -hmm. Arsenal in the quarterfinal, Tottenham in the quarterfinal, AC Roma uh, 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 in the quarterfinal. You see, those are, those are interesting games. <laughs> you see, the problem with the Champions League, and you might share in it or beg to defer, mm -hmm. when teams are eliminated from the UEFA Champions League, mm -hmm. they shouldn't go to the Europa League. They should sit it out yeah, to allow the small teams to, al yes, <laughs> to allow the so-called small teams, teams or minos uh, uh, to, to, to get a chance off, uh, to face that, off with that, one another. That, that was because the this <laughs> entitlement, this elitism, is not really fair. Yeah, <laughs> I, I think it's not only that. I, I think also also Mourinho shared the same idea, saying that it is not. Uh, sports merit wise mm, that yes. to leave another competition for to another come competition. For, to, to but <laughs> another one will argue it is to make this other competition stronger. No, no, it's not no, a big I, I, I differ because uh, yeah. uh, if you are in the Champions League and you're eliminated, it meant one thing. Yeah. You are not good, good enough. enough. Mm. Go back. Next mm -hmm. season come. Mm -hmm. And uh, if uh, uh, your level was uh, uh, the 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 the, uh, the Europa League that's where you belong. Yes. It's like saying uh, you went to start for KCSE, uh, you failed, uh, you came and sat for KCP. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't make sense. Yeah. Uh, you see, uh, it shouldn't be like that. Uh, but that is the rules uh, that you're playing <laughs> by right the now. Games are played. <laughs> it is the touchline or here or Y254 with Tyra Swayaki and Erika Ganya. Just a sneak preview of what happened midweek between the Champions League and the UEFA Europa League. That debate on... Uh, teams leaving the Champions League for the Europa League will still be there and we'll be talking about it some other time. But for the remaining minutes, let's go ahead and discuss some of the matches that will be coming off this afternoon in the English Premier League. We've got Leeds United playing home to Chelsea at Elland Road and then Crystal Palace will be playing home to West Bromwich Albion. At uh, Everton today, it is Everton versus Burnley and then Fulham will be welcoming Manchester City later into the night. But let's kick off today with the early kickoff and that is Leeds versus Chelsea. A big one for there and the question will be will Leeds handle uh, Thomas Tuchel's first defeat of the season? Oh, it's possible. And I mean, Tuchel can't win it forever yeah. or fail to, to lose forever yeah. because he secures draws also along the way. But the thing is, uh, when you look at both teams right now, Chelsea are at a better place. It would be an achievement for Leeds if they got themselves a draw out of this. I think they are over-depending on Patrick Bamford. And on the other hand, Chelsea are depending on a system. Mm -hmm. uh, and they follow it through. And so far, so good. The system has been working for them. Yes. Uh, Chelsea close all the key areas on the field. Leeds depend on r space. Mm -hmm. Now, with spaces closed, Leeds will have to come up with a strategy to find a way through the closed spaces. Now, that could be anything from running into your players and hoping to get a foul off it, okay. maybe a penalty or a free kick, yeah. or uh, and I know the, the, the death of the long ball, uh, yeah. that, that happened a long time ago and uh, it's been heavily criticized, but there are exceptions to every rule. Yeah. Leeds might have to raise it up a bit to try and open up Chelsea, but I don't see Leeds winning this game. I think it's going to be Chelsea. If Leeds get a draw, congrats to them. Uh, what about you? Eric Leeds are coming on to this game. They, they had a stint there before they lost to Aston Villa by one goal to nil, where they had gone 18 matches on a winning streak. They had 10 wins and 8 losses. And considering their style of play, it's all goals, goals. Can it happen for them today and stop the Chelsea winning streak? A stop in Chelsea will be tricky, but uh, what I know today, there will be goals. Yeah. Uh, because <laughs> Leeds will concede. <laughs> and uh, conceding goals will not stop them from, uh, from attacking. Yes, mm -hmm. because that's what they know. That's what they. And uh, as Terra says, uh, Leeds are going to avoid the Chelsea midfield because the Chelsea midfield is so strong. Yes, uh, uh, currently as it is, mm -hmm. so Leeds will uh, want to put that ball on the flanks mm -hmm. to get across to Bamford. Uh, that's the only way they'll be able to to to, to beat Chelsea because uh, uh, we have um, Kante, who is so good in that midfield, breaking up play every now and then. So if they Try to go through the midfield. Technically, yes. Chelsea, are be Chelsea are better. Mm -hmm. And uh, today, uh, Chelsea, I see them winning. Maybe 3-2.
a big one actually coming out from the Chelsea lineup today. They are starting off with a recognized number nine, starting off in that forward line. We are seeing Havertz playing pinpoint as a number nine in that front line and uh, then they uh, got a, a four two three one play for them we have got jogino and kante in the midfield and then pulsic mountain ziach being the support in the front there then harvard coming in on as a number nine for chelsea tricky one you can see how technical the formation <laughs> is for chelsea i wish we could just show him uh, just a sneak peek just yeah. just you can see how technical Chelsea. I, I think what 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 Tuchel, uh, what, Tuchel has to what Tuchel has done yeah. has stopped uh, uh, Leeds attack through the wings by putting Z there by mm -hmm. putting Pulisic. Those are speedy wingers uh -huh. yes. uh, who are going to come to 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 to, to Leeds. Yeah. So I think uh, uh, Chelsea have an edge. Mm -hmm. yeah. And then yeah. Leeds is coming on with a four-one-four-one formation. That's entertaining football from Marcelo Bielsa. Yes, yes, a flat yes. formation yes. for them. Yes. Yes. For them. Yes. Chelsea, we can see a diamond for. Ah. What 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 Matelo Biesler will do? Matelo Biesler will do will attack. Yes, he will play his game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but uh, he will concede goals. Yeah, he will concede goals, and uh, simply because now you see Tuchel has put in two speedy wingers. Yes, when you come, they will put the ball up, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, they will score yeah. definitely. Because and then. Uh, big game also away from Leeds and uh, Chelsea United from what I'm getting from both of you is that this is a game which Chelsea is expected to win. Yes. Mm. Absolutely. To enhance and their top four position, they yeah, have to win. Chelsea has to win this yes, one. Yes, yes. And coming on this one, considering that now the number one position has already been catered for at the moment, it's just waiting for the days and the trophy will be handed over to Manchester City. We've got to talk about the relegation battle and how it is hotting up and one team that is hired a coach to try and get out of that one has got to be West Bromwich Albion and they'll be playing against Crystal Palace at 6 p.m. Two experienced managers when it comes to the English Premier League holds on the other side, Sam Allardyce the other side. Is this a game where you could expect Allardyce to give Hudson a run for his money and get the three points for West Bromwich? Allardyce will lock the game, sit back and uh, wait for our nil because that's what he does best. Yeah. Uh, he's drilled his defense to, to, to defend really well. Uh, Crystal Palace, on the other hand, they have Zaha, uh, who is uh, tricky and uh, speedy. Yes. And then they have Christian Benteke, uh, who is also equally good. Yes. Uh, so, but Crystal Palace have a problem with their discipline. Their players have a problem yes. with discipline on field because yeah. if you look at uh, uh, the cards they've received, these, 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 these together with Everton, they've received a lot of uh, red cards and yellow cards. Yeah. Uh, so this is a game that is uh, going to be a hard game with a low-scoring game, yeah. maybe one nil or one one. It's a technical game. Well. Um, Crystal Palace are better on the road. This time they're at home. You've spoken of two experienced managers just the other day. Hodgson celebrated 46 years mm -hmm. in football management. Mm -hmm. So this would be a good icing on the cake of his birthday, 46th birthday as a coach. Um, Crystal Palace will have to grind and grind and grind to get the three points. Mm -hmm. But they should be wary of the West Bromwich Albion counter-attack. Yeah. Um, I agree with him. Um, it's going to be tight, uh, a low score, possibly. <laughs> but if Crystal Palace score an early goal, then here's the irony. It, it could give them confidence to keep attacking or to <laughs> sleep on the job and then yeah. give West Bromwich Albion a chance. Or it could give Crystal Palace a chance to make it a high-scoring game. <laughs> Overall, I think if there's a team to win, it's, it is going to be Crystal Palace. It is going to be a trick, that one, considering that Crystal Palace are just two, they're just six points away from safety in the relegation battle, and two teams that are actually coming up from that relegation battle. It is West Bromwich, Albion, and Fulham who are actually pushing way hard to come up and be on the safety side of the English Premier League. A big one there that will be happening at Merseyside Everton versus Burnley. And here also another mathematical comes in because Everton is also fighting to get into Champions League next season. Will they give Burnley any chance of getting a point from them? I think Everton will win this one despite the fact that uh, uh, they have one of their best midfielders out, that is Deco. 
uh, Diko will be out, uh, got injured for, 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 for the rest of the season. I think uh, he'll be out for eight weeks. Yes. Uh, that's a major blow to Everton. Uh, but they still have uh, people who can replace him. And uh, uh, the problem now with Burnley will be able to deal with uh, uh, the Everton attack. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is being led by Richardson mm -hmm. and uh, Calvin Lewis. They have uh, people who can make a big impact on the game. They have Hermes who can spot that pass that nobody else can make maybe uh, 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 in the two teams. Yes. Uh, uh, but uh, Burnley have the capability to sit back and absorb pressure mm -hmm. and then uh, wait for that one nil counter. Yes. If Burnley scored, scores first, Everton are in trouble. Yeah. It will be very difficult to break them down. Yeah. Yeah. And then a big one there is Carlo Ancelotti started his tenure with a game against Burnley and he has not lost to Burnley in four games, won three, drawn one. Gives him a chance to brag that this is a game I can go confidently and win. Yes, but he's pretty legible. If you mm. followed him from AC Milan, it's the same way he's playing now at Everton, yes. attacking from the flanks. Mm -hmm. Now if Burnley read this and they read it well, yeah. then Everton will find themselves in a very uncomfortable situation. Mm -hmm. Because at midfield, if they have to play through the heart of midfield, yeah. um, Burnley are very strong as we saw against Arsenal last Saturday. Yeah. And as we saw against United when they played United. Mm -hmm. But overall, I think mm -hmm. Everton should be able to win this one. Not necessarily comfortably, because yeah. Burnley are no stroll in the park. Mm -hmm. But Everton is a 90-minute side. That's yeah. their strength. Let's finish off today's matches before we talk about the big one yesterday between Arsenal and Tottenham Hotspur where Mourinho has actually come out to say that for me I look up, I don't look down. So we'll be waiting to see how that match will be panning along. But we've got to talk about one team that has actually started playing well, let's say for the last seven matches that they have been playing and that goes to be Fulham with Scott Parker. What do you make of them this time round? They're going to survive relegation. Uh, they're going, to, make that yeah, yeah, they're going to survive relegation yes. uh, because they have a capability mm -hmm. to turn up when they're expected to. Yes. Uh, they turned up against Liverpool and uh, they gave Liverpool hell yes. and uh, eventually won the game one. Mm -hmm. And uh, if they can get such kind of results, uh, I think they are on 26 or 28 points, if I'm not mistaken. Yes. Uh, so, so, so they are going to survive relegation. Actually, you are, you, are very, you are making a very key point for Fulham there because be, I think there was a time when they were like 10 points away yeah. from safety mm -hmm. and now they won against Liverpool and they just need one point mm -hmm. and they'll be out of the relegation. Yes. Zone. Yes. And that's a, that's a game they need to turn up now. Can yes. they turn up against City? Uh, they'll give City a hard time. Yeah. Uh, they'll give City a hard time because uh, 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 they, they are capable of doing that. They, they, I, I saw the game against Liverpool. When they decide to knock the ball around, yes. they can really do it nicely. Uh -huh. uh, but the problem is that uh, now, can they withstand Manchester City's attack? Yes. Remember Manchester City in the Premier League, they are wounded after being, having been defeated uh, by uh, Manchester United over the weekend, they cannot afford another loss because if they lose again today, then the, 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 the confidence now is shaky. Uh, you are 10 games or 9 games remaining and you are, you've had two losses. The, the self-belief will, will take a dent. Yes. And that is one thing people will not want to, 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 to do that. And whatever is going to make Manchester City win this game is the experience of the coach. Scott Parker has done well for himself as a player and now as a football manager. Yes. But his chances of beating Manchester City are rather slim. Yeah. The trick for City is to go into this game and kill it from the get go. Yeah. If you, the longer you stay, the more confidence you give Fulham. Yes. And you don't want to give a weaker side confidence. Yeah. They re that's what Liverpool did last weekend. Liverpool had the upper hand. Yeah. Mo Salah was shining on his side of the flank. Mm -hmm. But then they weren't making use of it. And 15, 20 minutes into the game, Fulham realized, you know what? We've got a chance here. Let's give it a go. Yeah. And that's what exactly they did. And they played that way to the last and final minute and won that one one nil. So City coming nice and early win yeah. this one from the get go. Well, again now tomorrow is the big one. There, these two teams have been actually 
are, how, how can I say, they have been thrown in each other's back, <laughs> considering where they come from. They are just six kilometers apart in London between Arsenal and Tottenham Hotspur. And it is going to be a big one for them tomorrow, considering all of them, Eric, are chasing for that Champions League position. Tottenham, just two years ago, was in the Champions League final. They started the season very well, crushing Manchester United like it has never been done before. But now they are out of even, they are out even of the top four race. Yes, and that's what they're looking for. And they are going against just cross-town rivals at Arsenal. That game has got to be a real mood watering clash tomorrow. I, I think Mourinho has, said, uh, has, has already set the mood uh, <laughs> by, by his comments, uh, him saying that uh, he doesn't look down, he looks up. Mm -hmm. uh, that already has rattled Arsenal. Yes. And uh, he's, he started his mind games. Mm -hmm. uh, so Arsenal may come into this game uh, reckless wanting to prove a point and that's what Mourinho wants because Mourinho yeah. wants you coming to attack him he yes. has the pace mm -hmm. he has pace he has. and uh, if you look at the last three games uh, his front three have performed that is Bell, yeah. Ken and Sumi yes they are now performing mm -hmm. how Arsenal are going to contend with that will determine the tie Mm -hmm. And uh, I read something interesting on, on my way here that uh, we've had derbies uh, and uh, this is uh, a derby that has uh, produced the second highest draws yes. in the history of the Premier League 23 mm -hmm. yeah. uh, with uh, the other derby between Everton and, uh, uh, and mm -hmm. Liverpool producing the highest draws, that is 24. Yes. But if you look at uh, the first leg of this game, uh, the same same derby, uh, Mourinho carried the day. Yes. He carried the day because he had the discipline to sit back mm -hmm. and wait for an opportunity to attack. Yes. And uh, Mourinho has done something uh, interesting this season mm -hmm. that Pochettino was not able to do with Harry Kane. Mourinho has turned Harry Kane not only uh, being a goal scorer, mm -hmm. but also a provider. Yes. If you look at his assist, he's, he's, he's on top. Yeah. So he can provide Mm -hmm. uh, he has the capability of playing as a number 10. Mm -hmm. And that one uh, will really give a problem to, to, to Arsenal to deal with. Yeah. And allowing somebody else to play as a number 9. Uh, he scored a beautiful goal <laughs> in their last game from out of nothing. Yes. But uh, let us not also rule out Arsenal because uh, they have a full uh, squad. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the only injury was Metro who has come back. Yes. So we're going to see both of them are having full squads. I would mm -hmm. like to see how it plays out we, we, on one yes. side and, and, and the other side. The, the question will be also, will be the midweek clash play into it, uh, let's say, according to fatigue uh, or will rotation come into play now? Both teams played midweek. Yeah. So they are fairly balanced mm -hmm. on that score. Mm -hmm. uh, the thing for Arsenal now, as, as you just mentioned, yeah. uh, Tottenham have a very strong attack, attacking mm -hmm. force. Yeah. So Arsenal, in that regard, need to play a high game. Because if you entertain these guys deep into your half, yeah. they'll do you in. Mm -hmm. And you have to give your opponent their, their, their props. Mm -hmm. I mean, Tottenham are better in attack than Arsenal right now. Mm -hmm. uh, one thing I'll give to Tottenham, of late, win or lose, they've been playing very well as far yeah. as I'm concerned. Mm -hmm. And tomorrow I think they'll play very well as yes. well. Mm -hmm. Arsenal's biggest problem is missing opportunities. Yes. They'll play well and then they get to the final third, they miss opportunities. Against yeah. Burnley they lost so many opportunities to put that game to bed. Mm -hmm. Yes, there were controversies about the penalties and whatnot. Those ones will always be there. But in terms of actual play, mm -hmm. they gave away so many opportunities. Even that goal they scored um, I'm not taking anything away from Obama Young's goal, yes. but it emanated from a goalkeeping error as well. Yeah. So there's the 50, 50 element. Obama Young put in 50% mm -hmm. and the other goalkeeper helped him with another 50%. Yeah. So Arsenal really need to, to, to put the game to bed, but I don't think they can. Tottenham right now at a very good place. <laughs> I think Tottenham will win this time. Talk, talking of Pere America Bayang is one of their key players when it comes to this season and how he's been performing. But what are also some of the other key players Tottenham should watch out for in the Arsenal squad? That kid, Saka. Saka. Uh -huh. Saka is good, wonderful left leg, a big character for an 18-year-old. Yes. And uh, he's going to give Tottenham problems. Yeah. Uh, but uh, what I'm looking at is that Mourinho knows that. 
Yes. And Mourinho knows how to prepare for big games. <laughs> and uh, Mourinho will be prepared. Uh, if he takes Saka out of the game, uh, then uh, he will uh, dent Arsenal's hopes of yeah. uh, getting something out of this game. Yes. Yeah, the other one, uh, we have also Lacazette, mm -hmm. who is also a very good player. Yes. Uh, he knows how to hold the ball, especially when he's playing as a long, a, a long striker. Yes. Uh, the main problem with Arsenal is that uh, Abu Meyang being uh, 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 the captain, he's not vocal. Uh -huh. That affects the team. Yes. Because if you look at Hugo Lloris on the other side, eh? Hugo Lloris, uh, uh, there was an incident whereby uh, Sumi did not track back. Hugo Lloris wanted to beat him up. Mm -hmm. As in, why are you not tracking back? You see, yes. that's what you need from a captain. Yeah. Captain is supposed to drive the team forward. Tony Adams. Uh, Tony Adams. Yes. Vieira, Patrick Vieira. Mm -hmm. You saw what they used to do. Uh, that is what Arsenal is liking right mm -hmm. now. Obama, I am preferred to lead by example. By yes. example. But you see, now you have to rally your troops. Mm -hmm. Because you are the general. You have to rally your troops and tell them, hey, yes. we, we are one new down, but you're going to make it. Especially yes. when you're chasing for a spot in the Exactly. Game. A big one there between Arsenal and Tottenham. Where do you think the match will be won? And how many goals do you expect? Uh, the, man, the match will be won on strategy for yeah. me. If Arsenal yeah. play it up, up then they, they, they stand a high chance. But if they invite Tottenham into their yard, yeah. goodness, Tottenham can bag three goals. But um, yeah, it's about strategy for me. And these are the games Jose Mourinho wakes up for. <laughs> he, will <lock> <laughs> he will lock the defense. Yes. He will lock the midfield because he knows <laughs> if he allows the midfield, Arsenal to play in that midfield, he's done. Yeah. So he's going to put his soccer there mm -hmm. uh, uh, to, to, to destroy all the balls. Yes. And uh, I think Tottenham will give to them 2-1. Wow. Tottenham, they are <laughs> being given a 2-1 win there by Erika Ganya. We'll ho be hoping how that's how it is going to happen, but Mpira Udunda, let's <laughs> wait and see how it is going to be happening. One team that is also going to get getting into this match day without their coach has got to be Sheffield United. Chris Wilder, who brought them all the way from that division to the championship and then to the Premier League. His first season in the Premier League finished at a very good position there at number eight, defeating some of the best teams in the world, the likes of Manchester United. But with mutual consent, he handed in his resignation and is no longer the coach for Sheffield United. And they'll be going on to this match day against Leicester City, who are hoping to cement their chance in Champions League football next season. It is going to be a tough outing for Sheffield. Always tricky when you have a new manager in. Yeah. But the thing that gives them a lifeline is that Leicester City are a second half team. Yeah. They give you that chance to play in the first half. If Sheffield can come and at least play for that one point, bare minimum, mm -hmm. in the first half, yes. then they do stand a chance. Mm -hmm. But if they just drag on and give Leicester time and time to, to play, yeah. Leicester will do them in, not just in the second half, <laughs> they'll yeah. do them in, in the first half yeah. as well. But second half, Leicester do put up a fight. Yeah. If you are just joining us here on the touchline on Y254, we had a preview of the friendly between Harambe Stars and South Sudan. The game is about to kick off on KBC Channel 1. So if you are a fan of Arambe Stars and how they are preparing for the Africa Cup of Nations qualifiers, they are kicking off against South Sudan at KBC Channel 1 in a few minutes from now. So let's go ahead and we can talk about Sheffield United. It is very tough to lose a coach that you have come up with and you have stayed together for the last five years and the Premier League has not been good for them this season and the coach has decided to leave the club. Will it be just a confirmation for them that at the end of the day you are going to the championship, you need to prepare well again to come back onto the Premier League? I think losing uh, uh, their, their, their main coach uh, at this particular moment, uh, bearing in mind what he has done for them, uh, confirms them that uh, their, their chances of going uh, uh, being relegated are now higher. Yes. And uh, the, the, the problem is the, 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 the board. Uh, the board just refused to back the coach. Because uh, if, if, if you followed him, uh, last season he really performed well. And he yes. was a contender of the coach of the season. Mm -hmm. uh, they refused to back him in the transfer market. And um, they refused to sort out some of the uh, problems with the uh, a player contracts. Remember, yes. there, was a, there was a player who, 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 who even their captain actually, who said he's not going to sign a new contract, and uh, the board refused to sort it out, or they were yes. sluggish in sorting it out. So the coach will, uh, remained with a very lean squad, lacking depth.
uh -huh. and uh, uh, being that uh, the rigorous Premier League, when fatigue kicks in, now you start getting a beating. Yes. Especially from a small team like that. You'll start getting a lot of beatings. And um, I think the coach did, just did the honorable thing and said, hey, look here, uh, we've come from far, yeah. but this is where we part ways. Mm -hmm. uh, it's unfortunate. It's 10 games to the, to the end of the season, uh, but he had no other choice. Should, should, he have, uh, should he have left earlier, uh, earlier in the season when he had uh, already seen the journey into the Premier League was becoming really tough for Sheffield because there was a time I think they went 16 matches without even a win. Mm. They, had a, they had, I think, only a draw. Mm. And uh, that was actually something that showed you that we are not on the right track. I'm of the opinion that he should have left earlier. Yeah. But it's usually very difficult to let go, even in relationships of any nature. Yeah. Away from football, just life in general. Human beings struggle to let go. Yeah. And for him, Sheffield United was like his baby. Yeah. He's come from, he's brought them back to the status that they once previously enjoyed. Yeah. Sheffield United, Sheffield Wednesday. Mm, yeah. Queen's Park Rangers, those used to be the teams in England when some of us were growing up. Yeah. Wimbledon FC. Mm -hmm. And he brought them back to those glory days. Yeah. So it's I don't want to be hard on him. It's not easy to let go of that baby of yours and, yeah. and let someone else come in. So yes, he should have left earlier, but now that's water under the bridge. Finally, wow. he's left, and for <laughs> sure, I think they're going to be. Uh, I think he was waiting to see if they'll back him in January. Yes, uh, they didn't back him uh -huh. in January, yeah. and uh, he thought, <sighs> "There's uh, nothing yeah. more I can offer." <laughs> nothing more I can offer. <laughs> and then finally, let's uh, finish off with uh, Manchester United playing uh, against West Ham, and also there, the battle for top four becomes a key one for both Manchester United and West Ham United, who have a chance to finish also in a Champions League spot. Manchester United are in trouble <laughs> yeah. uh, going by what uh, they did in midweek yeah. and going by the amount of injuries they have uh, uh, they have uh, Rashford who is out they have uh, Cavani who is out they have Marshall who is out so they're going to start this game without uh, 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 their normal front uh, uh, three yes uh, they have Pogba who is still out they have the gear who is uh, <laughs> on uh, personal on, reasons personal reasons yeah so they have up to six uh, first team players yeah uh, who are out mm -hmm. and uh, this is where by now uh, um, uh, Olegana has to show his character Mm -hmm. That uh, he is a team, he's a, he's a coach who can handle that kind of uh, a team. Yes. Because uh, if uh, he is defeated tomorrow, uh, having drawn with the Similan, then the question marks that have been there will come back. Yes. Because he had tried to arrest them with uh, defeating Man City. Uh, but you see, uh, he's also going against a very disciplined West Ham mm -hmm. team. And he's lucky mm -hmm. that Jesse Lingard is on loan. Why it not on loan? He could have played against Manchester yes. United, which would have added more problems to Manchester United, bearing yeah. in mind that he's playing so well right now. And uh, he has, uh, uh, going, he's going against a manager mm -hmm. who knows Manchester United. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. David Moyes. Uh -huh. He knows uh, some of the players, he knows the structures. Yes. And uh, he's been in Manchester United. And uh, he has come into West Ham and brought defensive discipline. Mm -hmm. I think it was the FA, FA yes. that they moved up to the, uh, the, the, the extra time. Yes. He, he has that in his team. Mm -hmm. he's, put, he's been able to, he has a capability of working with uh, few resources yes. to achieve extraordinary things. And that's what is done uh, yeah. with, with, with this team. So tomorrow it will be really tough for Manchester United. Just uh, sticking with Manchester United, it's also tough for consistency. Is it the coach or the players? Because you see Manchester United, they win 9-0 against Southampton. Against Southampton, they, get, they come into a draw. They play very well against Manchester, Manchester City. City. They end up with a draw against AC Milan. Who is to blame? Is it the players or the manager? It's a bit of both. But it's also the lion's share of that. Yeah. Obviously, falls on the on the feet of the coach, or, or the manager rather, yeah. Oli Gunnar Solskjaer. Remember, he did not get this job on merit. I'm not being hard on him. I supported him from the beginning. Yes. But the truth is, he did not get this job on merit. He got it through what in Kenya we call Kujuana. <laughs> this guy is a legend at Manchester United as a former player. So he's one of the boys. Yes. Let's take him back. And I met Manchester United fan 
out there randomly and asked him, how come you, you fans of United are so soft on Ole Gunnar Solskjaer? This guy told me he's our boy. Yes. It's, it's <laughs> he a, won it's, us the champions. Yeah. 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 It's, a, it's a boy, boy, old boy network. Yeah. So most, the lion's share of the blame is on his employer mm -hmm. and himself. Yeah. But having said so, uh, to further compound the fact that United have a lot of injuries, as Eric has pointed out, is the fact that they are meeting a team that is very strong at the moment. Yes. And is hungry for glory. Yeah. West Ham United. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you of a time I remember seeing West Ham United contesting for UEFA Champions League spot yeah. at this time of the season. Yeah. This time around, and it's no fluke, you look at their squad, I mean, Declan Rice for me, is just something else he's altogether. He's, he's yeah. really, really good. And it's not a fluke. He's yeah. actually really, really good. Yeah. Um, two years ago, I sat here and I said he was my man of the 2019 season, player of the season, which was crazy at yeah. the time because guys looked at me and they thought, <laughs> what is Tira saying? Yeah. Now I think they can look back and see where I was coming from with that. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's, if United get a draw out of this, yes. then they have reason to celebrate because it's not going to be easy. Wow. As a big one for that. Where do you think the game will be won between Manchester and West Ham? Uh, West Ham uh, in the midfield. Yeah. If uh, West Ham are able to take Bruno Fernandes out of the game, that is it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> for Manchester United, <laughs> that is it. Because uh, apart from that, uh -huh. they don't have anybody else who can influence the game. Yes. Rashford is not in. Marshall is not in. Cavani is not in. Mm -hmm. uh, so they're looking at Bruno Fernandes pulling the strings in the attack. Yes. Uh, with uh, 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 um, I'm sure now they'll give uh, a start to Ahmad Diallo. Yes. Uh, they may also give a start to Greenwood. Mm -hmm. So who supplies mm -hmm. Bruno Fernandes? Yeah. So if they take Bruno Fernandes, and that's what Moyes will do, put the clan right there. Yeah. No ball comes to Bruno Fernandes. Mm -hmm. That will be trouble. Yeah. And then now the other problem is that will Maguire be able to, co to, to deal with Antonio? Yes. Antonio is a bully of a striker. Mm -hmm. And you've seen what he can do. Yeah. That is another place that the game may be won. Mm -hmm. Because when it comes to those set pieces, Moyes will be belonging for those set pieces. He's belonging for those corners. Yeah. Because he knows that when a corner comes in, that's a half goal. Yeah. Because he'll put Antonio there. Antonio jumping with Maguire, that's a goal. Well, that's where we come to the end of the touchline here on Y254. Thanks a lot, Tyrus, for coming on board. Eric, it's always a pleasure having you here on the touchline. Seven minutes, eight to nine minutes gone between Arambe Stars and South Sudan. The game is live on KBC Channel 1. So for the sports fans, you can move there. For the others on here, Y254, you can always wait for Rock Tour. That will be coming away from 4 p.m. For all of us, the crew of Touchline, we say good afternoon. Enjoy the rest of your broadcast here on Y254.